You know, there's been a lot of talk about uh, downgrading bonds, and and uh, I think, even though there are a lot of professional and professional economists who talk about it, I think that that's a lot more talk than concern. If if I downgrade a bond, then what, what I'm really saying, if I downgrade a company's bond or a municipality's bond or something like that, I'm saying that their finances are so shaky that I don't think they're going to be able to pay the commitment on that bond in the future. Um, are people really concerned about that with the United States? Do they really think that the United States government is going to say to all of those banks, all of those individuals, all of those foreigners, and to the Federal Reserve, you know that bond you have? We're not going to pay you on that. Or are they going to say that interest payment that is due to you? We're not going to pay you on that. That's not going to happen. That, that is an indication of the fact that we do have a problem over time. But in reality, I think people realize that they're going to get paid some kind of money in the future. Now, the concern is this. Suppose that we continue to buy those bonds by having the Federal Reserve print money and pay those bonds, then there is, in a sense, a default because when I buy that bond, I have a sense in my mind of what I think the real purchasing power of that bond is going to be in the future. The real purchasing power of that bond depends upon how much inflation there is over time. If I am financing my debt by having the Federal Reserve buy those bonds and print more money, then in reality, the, the real purchasing power of those future payments that I get go down. And while the government hasn't defaulted in the sense that they haven't paid me the money back, they have defaulted in the sense that I'm not having the purchasing power with that money that I'm going to get back in the future. And as a, a long, uh, long ago historical context, um, Germany at the end of World War I, the Treaty of Versailles, they had to make uh, reparation payments to the people that they had waged war with. So um, they raised money, sold bonds, they raised money by selling bonds, then the German Central Bank bought those bonds back and we had the hyperinflation. Uh, you got your money back in Reichsmarks, as it was called then, you got your money back. It just, it just didn't have any purchasing power. So if they sent you uh, a payment that paid off that bond, but now what you thought was going to buy a uh, small house for you would buy a small bottle of milk, then in essence the government defaulted on that bond. So it, it's in that sense that we're kind of concerned about default. But are we really concerned that the U.S. government is going to say to those bondholders, you can't get your interest and you can't get your principal back. That's not going to happen.